Okay, I'm going to show you now how to find the equation of a polynomial given its graph. So if you have a look at this polynomial, see how it curves down. There's a root right here at negative 1. Then it keeps going, comes back up. And there's a root here at positive 2. So my roots are negative 1 and positive 2. Now, what kind of root is this over here at negative 1? From experience, what I want you to learn to see is if a straight line crosses through it, then that's a single root. Even a curved line, actually. A curved line, but with nothing funny happening there, that's a single root. If it bounces and looks like a parabola, that's a double root. So that would be something like x minus 1 squared. And here, the factor would be x minus 1. If you get this shape, where it curves one way and then curves the other, that is a triple root. So the factor based on that root would be x minus 1 cubed. And then furthermore, if it's flattened out, so if it bounces, but it's flattened out, see that, that flatter bit? It's not completely flat, but flatter. That's a quadruple root. So that could be something like x minus 1's fourth power. So if it bounces and flattens, that's typically a fourth root. If it just bounces but looks like a parabola, that's a double root. If it curves one way and then curves the other, we call this an inflection point. That's a triple root. And if it just curves but nothing funny happens through the transition, that's a single root. So as I look here, over here at positive 2, that's a single root. See how here, though? Let me zoom in. See how here it curves one way, then curves the other? That's a triple root. So over here, this is triple. The order of this polynomial is even, because it extends upward this way and this way, and the leading coefficient is positive. Watch the last video if you're not 100% clear on what that means. So as I go to write down the equation, I'm going to incorporate a root at negative 1. So I'm going to say x plus 1, because this gives me a root at negative 1. A root at positive 2, so I'm going to write x minus 2. And I'm going to account for the fact that that's a triple root by cubing that x plus 1, because I have a root at negative 1, x minus 2, because I have a root at plus 2, and I'm cubing the x plus 1, because the root of that, minus 1, is a triple root, and I know that by the shape. Now, if I was to just say that my polynomial is equal to this and I'm done, I could be wrong because this could represent any polynomial that has roots here and has a triple root here, but it could be shallower and have those same roots, or it could be deeper and have those same roots. So how do I get this one exactly? Well, I've got to determine the value of that leading coefficient. Here's how I'm going to find the leading coefficient. I'm going to look for a point on this polynomial other than the roots. And the point that I have is right here. It's where it hits the y-axis. This intersects the y-axis at negative 1. My y-intercept is negative 1. Now in Lagrange notation, here's how we write the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the point where your x value is 0. My point where my x value is 0 is negative 1.
So I can then take the equation that I wrote down and put that information in. Let me just copy out the equation again and remind you where it all came from. My polynomial at x is equal to some unknown leading coefficient times x plus 1 cubed times x minus 2. I know this because I have a root at minus 1. That is, if x was equal to minus 1, this would become a 0. And I have a root at positive 2. If x was a positive 2, this would become a 0. I also know that my root at negative 1 is a triple root. Okay, the other thing I know from my y-intercept is that if x is 0, my y value is negative 1. So here's how I incorporate that information into my equation. I say if x is 0, the whole thing is negative 1. However, also, if x is 0, my polynomial is a times 0 plus 1 cubed times 0 minus 2. So I've just put 0 into here. So these are both expressions of the value of my polynomial when x is 0. So I make them equal to each other. That means that negative 1 is equal to a times 0 plus 1 cubed times 0 minus 2. I can now do a little bit of math to this. Minus 1 is equal to, that's just 1 cubed. And that's negative 2. Or a is equal to negative 1 over negative 2 which means that a is equal to 1 half. I now know the value of my leading coefficient. So I can then write down my equation. My polynomial at x is equal to 1 half x plus 1 cubed times x minus 2. You could expand that out so it looks more like a traditional polynomial if you like. This is clearly a fourth order polynomial because your leading term is going to be 1 half x cubed times x, which is 1 half of x to fourth power. And that should make sense. I have a positive leading coefficient and an even order polynomial. Well, yeah, I have an even order polynomial because it opens like that. And it's positive. If it was negative, it would be down here. 